this is Diane from Teach Pre-K and um, I haven't made a video for a little while and I'm going to tell you why. Um, I have had kind of a rough year. I've had a rough group of kids in my pre-K. My morning preschool class is amazing, but I've been teaching for 13 years and I've just never experienced anything quite like the 16 kids that I have in my pre-k this year um, I'm just gonna kind of give you a little overview of what I'm talking about because um, I have a feeling some other people are experiencing some similar things um, I think a lot of this stems from how old the kids were during the COVID lockdown um, just I've I've been really trying to piece it together but I came back to something super basic, um, but I did have to do a lot of trial and error, and wow, did I lose confidence in myself as a teacher, and it was rough, not to the point of tears, but I really beat myself up a lot. Um, I'm used to having excellent classroom management, I mean, it gets chaotic. They're three years old and four years old. It always gets chaotic. They always want to act up. That always happens. That's typical. I'm used to a level of chaos. I'm used to a level of defiant behavior um, that I can eventually curb and um, kind of resolve a lot of issues. But um, here's the deal. So, if you don't mind me getting a little closer. So, this year, um, I knew most of the kids that were coming what we do at my school is we have a three-year-old program and a four-year-old program two teachers so i get the other teachers three-year-olds in my four-year-old pre-k she gets my three-year-olds which were really really hard last year too in her pre-k so i knew she was getting a rough bunch but Let's just say this teacher is one of the most amazing teachers ever. Like, she's fabulous. She used to be one of my aides, and we just have a different style. So I knew I was a little firmer with my three-year-old class, um, and they were rough. So she got them. They had matured. Still rough. Still rough. Not as rough as they were. So good. I watched hers last year, and oh boy, I knew I was going to have some rough kids. I had prepared myself for it. Um, I studied all summer about handling some challenging behaviors, and I thought I was more than prepared. Of course, I had been teaching forever. Like, hello, I am so prepared to handle this group of kids. And usually, the first week or two, the kids are so good. They are on their best behavior. You guys... These guys were not on their best behavior. First day, they were not on their best behavior. My first day, I remember leaving like, oh, no, 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 no. What am I going to do? And my aide and I, who she used to be my daughter's fourth grade teacher, excellent teacher, excellent mother. I mean, we've got it going on. We are two very experienced, very patient, very loving, very kind we were very firm and had, you know, my kids are wonderful kids and were wonderful in school. I taught her kids. They were wonderful in school. She taught my kids. I mean, we knew the kind of kids that we raised, right? Um, of course, they're always different at home. My oldest daughter was crazy and really difficult, but she thought she was the most wonderful little gem. So yay me. But um, so it's not like... These kids were coming into this classroom with inexperienced teachers who didn't know what they were doing, who didn't understand kids that age. Oh no, we had all the tools in the toolbox. But here's the thing. I was using the English system. These kids were all on the metric. I mean, that's the only way I can say it. Um, I started to discover pretty rapidly that a lot of things that I had just gone to in the past were not working. 
I went to other teachers that I knew and discussed this class with them at great length, got their advice. I had my principal come and observe and she observed like every day. She was like, I have no idea what to tell you here. Um, the behavior specialist at my school also subbed with me one day and she was like, I have no idea. Um, so the definition of crazy is you keep doing what you've been doing, expecting a different result, right? So I thought, okay, I've got to reinvent the wheel here. I obviously am missing some things. I've got these extremely defiant kids. I've got kids doing things on my rug during circle time that I did in my sophomore year of high school. Um, so their misbehavior was off the charts very sophisticated this is a highly intelligent group of kids and they work in tandem to throw the the teachers off and we were getting thrown off um and as, although we try to remain calm which is so important when you're teaching kids this young it just wasn't always working out that way for me and i knew I knew I had to change things. Um, so I tried changing a lot of things. I looked at all the areas I was having problems with and I was like, okay, clean up after our beginning of the day mini centers, terrible. So I assigned them each a table, put their little faces. So 16 kids, we had four areas, four kids were responsible for cleaning up those areas. They actually did really well at that. And that is something I think that I will do later. I had to abandon ship on it because I realized that not only did I throw that at them, then I had a bathroom. Um, two people could go to our bathroom at a time. Our bathroom's down the hall. And I had to know who was in the bathroom and be able to keep track of that. So I made all their little pictures. There were two Velcro spots. They could take their picture, put it on a spot. So I always knew who was in the bathroom. So they knew if they went to that wall and they saw that their both spots were filled, they couldn't go to the bathroom until somebody came back. That I'm gonna do for the rest of my existence because it was awesome. Um, it's gonna help me with fire drills and other things like that. I will always know. I've always known who was at the bathroom. This group of kids just started going crazy. Um, they all bring a water bottle and I keep them in trays at the front of the room so they can get a drink of water. Well, they were all getting a drink of water during circle time. And I had said no water during circle time, but I'm so thirsty, I'm so thirsty, I'm dying. Ah. Oh my God. And then all of circle time would be kids whining about water. So then I started hiding the water during circle time. Just put it in a closet, said, nope, we're not doing water during circle time. It's not even out. It will be out during center time. You can go in your free time and go get water anytime you want. This is my time. So you need to sit and listen. Even though I had established that rule, didn't make a difference. They didn't care. They didn't care about any of my rules. Ah, it was insane. So I did that. I got carpet squares because uh, this group, out of 16, 12 come from our extended day period. They're there together all morning. They eat lunch together. They walk over. They, they know each other so well which can be a good thing and a bad thing. And they're talk, 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 which I have my morning social time or my first coming into the classroom social time. You go to a table, you play, you play with your friends. That's your time to get that out. Then we clean up. Then we have circle time. Well, circle time was a disaster. It was horrible. These kids could not sit on the rug. Um, they would sit near their friends and I'd be moving kids all the time. Uh, in years past, I would have kids go to my sit out table maybe once, twice a year tops, and that it just never happened again. They knew I meant business. These kids did not care, did not care at all. If they got sent away from the rug, didn't care, didn't matter to them. They wanted it. It was bizarre. So um, that didn't work. So I got carpet squares, ordered some carpet squares printed out their names, used packing tape, taped their names to them. Um, Cause I had some carpet spots that I had been using earlier, but they didn't stick to my rug. 
they had to go on the outside. I don't always want my class in a circle, even though I call it circle time. I like them to just be able to see me. So I need some in the middle of the rug. My rug's not big enough for everybody to sit around. So I got these carpet squares. We put them out. Um, we are very strategic. It was so hard. It is so hard to try to set the kids during circle time in a place where there's not going to be an issue or a problem. So that we, I think we got that one down. Um, I had to string ropes and stop signs um, at my uh, block center and my dramatic play center because they are not supposed to go there during our like welcome table time, chat chat time. And they were going over there all the time. Never in 13 years had kids do this after the first week. Because we go over it and over it and over it. I do that repetition. I do everything a teacher is supposed to do. They don't care. They do not care at all. And I'm not used to this. I'm like, what? So I did that. I started that um, in October. So I had gone through September and just gone, okay, it's not working anymore. We're revamping. So I, I, I added some things. I took things away. I gave everybody a job when normally I have like five or six kids who don't have a job. And I just rotate my job. I don't like doing it on a merit system uh, because then I get too much. But I was being good. But I was being good. Ah. So um, I got to know this class a lot better. I was having a hard time establishing relationships with them, which I know are so important to creating a good classroom environment. Um, but I got to know them better as time went on. It usually takes until Halloween to get really settled. Um, but one thing I realized is out of the 16, I had 12 kids that worked so hard to get my attention constantly. This is a very needy, needy, needy group of kids. If I say, oh, I love the way that Henry's sitting ready to go. It's just so great. But what about me? But what about me? But what about me? Oh, so I have to mention all their names. If I compliment one, I have to compliment all of them. So if I'm calling out positive behaviors, which always, you know, gets all the kids to want to do them, I get the kids saying, but I was doing this, but I was doing this. You didn't notice this. You didn't notice this. Whew. So I just added more noticing positive behavior, and that kind of leveled out after a while. And it always has a positive effect, so that was really good. We had a week where um, if somebody went to put their coat on the hook and it dropped and they just walked up to get into the room, I'd say, oh, you need to go back and hang that up over and over and over. Never had kids just let their kids, their coats be on the floor. Never, never in my life. And there was one day when I had been reading during story time, the kids had come in from recess and I went out in the hall and so many coats were on the floor and I was like, what is this? No, 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 no. They are going to respect their things first, then our classroom things, and we're going to work from there. So um, I did that and that was good. Uh, we did, you know, the carpet squares and everything up to Thanksgiving. Then I thought, let's just let them come back and let them sit where they want. They've been really good. Let's try it out disaster one of the worst days i had all year so um long story short or long story even longer because this has been a super long story i uh let go of everybody having the jobs went back to my normal job chart it was just too hard to keep up with with 16 kids and i was making up jobs that were dumb um so it's basically my core set of jobs i've got 10 jobs that the kids do they just rotate everyone seems to be good with it um, I still have the bathroom thing. I don't do the little cleanup uh, pictures. I think I will do that next year because it was super effective, but I just threw too many things at these kids. Um, the biggest takeaway I have is yes, I've got to do the carpet squares forever. Even with them, uh, circle time's really, really hard with this group. Really, really hard. 
Um, I love each and every one of these kids. You guys, they are all so smart, so funny, so enjoyable. And every time I sit one-on-one -on -one with them, oh my gosh, I love them. I love, love, love them. So what I kind of figured out was I got very wrapped up in, oh my gosh, this is going so poorly. What am I doing wrong? I need all this help. Uh, and I put a lot on myself. And over my winter break, I thought, okay, you know what? Here's the deal. I am a very loving, silly, fun, firm, fair teacher. I am going to go back to school and I am going to be so loving, so silly, so fun, so patient, so kind, so firm, and so fair. And these kids are amazing. Circle time and any rug time is still really hard. And it's going to be till the end of the year. I'm accepting this. It's going to be. We're going to have our good days and our not so good days. And I'm going to take lots of pleasure in the good days. And the not so good days, I'm going to just go, you know, let's try again tomorrow. But the most important thing was, yes, I needed to reset the way I dealt with these kids. I've never had assigned seating on my rug. Never never had to um so that was a new thing i had to think outside the box i had to think what am i going to do differently because what i've been doing isn't working i've got to switch things up so um that was good i'm not going to start out any year with assigned seating but now i've got that in my toolbox and i know it's there um Doing a reset and acknowledging as much positive behavior as I could. Even if I had to find 16 wonderful things those each child was doing. Like, I mean, I have 16 kids. So I'd have to say, I like the way that Henry's sitting. I love the way that Jack has his hands in his lap. Love the way that Nora's sitting and just ready to go. I love the way that Oliver's always sitting on his carpet square crisscross applesauce. I would go through all of the kids. Um, I sing a song. I like the way that Jack is sitting. I like the way that Marlo's sitting. I just started adding names so I would get through everybody like that. Like, I like the way Henry, Jack, and Calvin are sitting. I like, you know, not really going with the music, but I had to get that positive in. They all are just in my face, begging for my attention all the time. And the more I give, the sillier I am, the more I accept them the way they are, the better my day is going. I'm still firm, still have my classroom rules, but I'm letting myself breathe and I'm letting myself show less frustration to almost no frustration and all the love, 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 love I have for them and it's it's turning things around it's making just every day so much better and I'm kind of going with the crazy um, I'm not trying to keep the wave on the sand it's never gonna happen never so if you have behaviors going on in your classroom just look at them and just go you know it's not worth fighting this anymore it's not worth fighting this anymore. It's not worth fighting this anymore. I had a little girl last week just beside herself. Uh, wouldn't even walk up the stairs. Didn't want to go to extended day. And normally it's like, you get your backpack on? Let's go. We're going. And, you know, we suck it up, buttercup, and we go. And usually, you know, they snap out of it. I can cajole them a little bit, be silly with them, kind of play with them getting up the stairs. She was having none that day. So finally, I picked her up. She melted into my body, put her head on my shoulder, and I just said, I'm walking her over today, just like this. Not gonna fight it. Not gonna exert my energy trying to make 
a three-year-old girl who's obviously exhausted from being in school after vacation. Misses her mommy, misses her toys, misses being at her house. It's not, not gonna make her walk up those stairs. So by me letting go of a little of my need to have things go a certain way and showing the kids more love, more patience, more kindness, more understanding, it has made my life so much better, so much easier. So look at your situation and see how can I be more loving in this situation? What does this child really, really need from me? How can I reset this entire behavior system with a few tweaks, willing to chuck the ones aren't, that aren't working and go with the ones that are working and throw more love in there, more kindness, more positivity. See what blooms out of that. Um, bring your parents on board. I had extra difficulty with a couple of kids, brought their parents on board, totally turning the thing around too. A little help from the parents at home, that's a good thing too. So, uh, for all you new teachers out there, um, even a veteran teacher who, you know, I don't have it all figured out, no one has it all figured out, every year you have different challenges, every year you have a different group of kids, every year the whole vibe is different, but it's always fit within the structure that I normally have. This year, it didn't, it didn't. These kids were a year and a half when the COVID lockdown hit. Most of the parents work. So I'm sure they were working from home or trying to just get through the day if they were an essential worker and not infect their families with this weird virus we didn't know anything about. They got put in front of screens, got a lot of toys ordered from Amazon to keep them from being bored. Um, didn't get maybe as much adult attention as they wanted or got too much. So now they don't understand why they don't have it all the time. But um, if you have kids that are about four, four turning five right now, three and a half to that five, really look hard at their behavior and their needs. And if you want to get back to being the fun, loving, awesome teacher, Throw the positivity at them. Throw that attention at them. And just look at what you're doing. Turn some things on their head. And, and you've got this. I know you've got this. Um, leave some comments. Uh, if you have any hints for me, if you've had a super difficult class um, that was really needy and really in your face and just needed so much of your attention and energy all the time, let me know. Um, I'm with these kids another five months. Um, five and a half months, yeah. And um, they're going to always be a challenge for the rest of this year. But I do love them and I am enjoying them and I'm enjoying myself for the first time this year. So thanks for listening. Um, since I'm feeling better about stuff, I'm going to get back on at least a one video a week um, going forward. I've got to do um, some math center differentiation and go over again how I uh, teach letters, um, add a few things in there. I think you might really like a few things that I have coming up. So keep watching and thank you for always being so supportive.